Okay, Syracuse was a Greek town initially, ancient Greek town. Archimedes, one of the most famous mathematicians, was born and lived here and did all his important work. But I'm going to tell you the story of Archimedes, because stories, well, they help you remember stuff. So this is a good one, so stick around. It's the guy who ran down the streets naked shouting Eureka. At GCC, it's just the method for determining the volume of an irregular shape that you need to know. But that's Archimedes' principle. In A-level, you need to understand Archimedes' principle in terms of measuring the upthrust on an object. We can calculate the terminal velocity over any sphere, whether it's falling or even rising, in a fluid. OK, so story time. So Archimedes' principle in Syracuse. But Archimedes was already a celebrated mathematician. So the king of Syracuse, who was Hiero II, had a crown made for him. He had a crown made for him by a local goldsmith, and he'd given this goldsmith this ingot of gold. Now, if you can imagine an ingot, that's a, that's a regular shape. That's a cuboid shape. And they knew the weight of that ingot of gold that he'd given to the goldsmith. And the goldsmith went ahead and they made a crown. It was like a votive crown. It was to be used in a, in a uh, temple, a bit like the one behind me. The king didn't know whether the goldsmith was being honest, because as you'll know from your work on alloys, that you can actually mix metals together, and they'll still often look like one of the, or the other metals. So the king was wondering, have I been cheated here? He wasn't sure whether, as was quite a common thing, and still is quite a common thing, the goldsmith had mixed in another less precious metal into the gold to make it an alloy. So he wondered, this king, he wondered, is this crown pure gold, or is somebody trying to rip me off? And he said to Archimedes, Archimedes, solve this problem for me. You're the most famous mathematician in the land. You need to solve this problem. You could measure the volume and the weight of that regular cuboid ingot, you couldn't measure the volume very easily of the crown. Yes, okay, you could work it out, you could look at all the different parts, you could calculate all the different lengths times width times height, but that would be very complex and it wouldn't be very accurate either. So he says to Archimedes, solve this problem, or you know what, Archimedes, I'll kill you. That's the way kings did things back then. They were pretty black and white about things like that. Either you're useful to me or you're not useful to me. So solve this problem or else. So Archimedes is absolutely stressed out of his nut, as you can imagine. And he did what a lot of people do when they're stressed. He goes and draws a really deep and hot bath. So he fills up his bathtub. He doesn't just fill it up, you know, a few inches. He doesn't fill it halfway. He's stressed out. He fills it to the brim. And Archimedes, he, he lowers himself down into the bath. And you can imagine it. All that stress as he lowers himself in just disappears. And he goes, ah. Oh. And as he sinks down in slosh. All this water just sloshes over the edge of the bath. And he jumps out of the bath and he shouts, Eureka! 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 Which means, like, I have it. I understand it. I get it now. I've solved the problem. Out of the bathroom, down the street, shouting, Eureka! 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 And everyone's like, there's Archimedes again, you know, he's, he's running through the street naked again. And what he realised is that when he sank into the bath, that the water that he pushed over the side would be equal in volume to the volume of his body. The actual space that water takes up is the same as the volume that he takes up in that bathtub. He's displaced the same volume of water as he takes up. So he's worked out a way to measure the volume of the crown. It's nice, I feel like you can imagine Archimedes here just sitting, enjoying Euripides, maybe Trojan women or something like that. One of his favourite Greek tragedies. That's not the important point of the story. Whether or not the crown was underweight or overweight, whether it was alloyed or whether it was pure gold, we think, in fact, that the... Uh, goldsmith was cheating the king so he went and got, got killed but that doesn't matter because what he's managed to do is he's worked out a way to verify the density of that metal in that crown so density as you'll know is mass divided by volume and what he's given us is a way to measure the volume of any irregular shape and that's the method you need to know for measuring the volume of an irregular shape and that method allows us to verify the density of any irregular shape using this equation density is mass over volume in your GCSE then you ought to be saying things like use a displacement can to measure the volume of water displaced when the irregular solid sinks into the water or you could use a measuring cylinder which is large enough for the object to sink into it but the larger the measuring cylinder then the lower the resolution of the scale on it so the less kind of accurate it becomes
You didn't really stop there. You'll go ahead and you'll look at Archimedes' principle in a bit more detail. Now if you can imagine a little toy boat maybe floating in a pool of water, well it's only kind of going to displace a little bit of water at first until we start loading it up. If we add masses into that toy boat then it will sink lower and lower and lower down pushing out more water because it has a larger weight and it displaces more water, it pushes more water out of the way. We call that force, well that upwards force, due to the water and up thrust. It worked out that it displaces an equal weight of water to its weight. So he actually worked out the value of the up thrust produced by water on floating objects. It's not until 2000 years later that you get Newton talking about a balance of forces. So he'd actually realised that the weight of water displaced was equal to the weight of the boat. At A-level you need to be able to combine this and the equation for Stokes force and the equation for weight into equations for terminal velocity of spheres falling or rising in fluids. And I have a video here where I do that derivation of terminal velocity. I have a more GCSE focused video here where I actually do an exam question where you have to explain how to use that method to calculate the density of an irregular shape. <laughs> Archimedes didn't just come up with this principle, he didn't just uh, do one little bit of thinking where he got into the bath and figured out something important. He also spent a lot of time applying Pythagoras' rules to be working out the volumes and surface area of spheres, which we use a lot still today in our GCC and A-level maths. Uh, he was also famous for what we call an Archimedes screw, which is a clever way of taking water uphill. It literally is a screw that carries the water through the blades of the screw. That was one of his most kind of effective inventions. So he was able to explain levers, which you'll know about as being the principle of moments. You know, something is balanced, the fulcrum is balanced when the moments on either side are balanced. So he was able to use an explanation of levers and also pulleys mathematically. He also was quite close to figuring out a method of doing calculus, which is differentiation and integration which you'll be doing if you do A-level maths as well. He was using the idea of the infinitesimally small, considering the things are very, very small changes, and he was using the method of exhaustion to prove his theories for the surface area and the volume of sphere. Archimedes was born in 287 BC. We don't know a great deal about his life, and we're not absolutely sure about all his life. We are quite sure that he died in 212 BC. He also came with some pretty spurious ideas when, um, during the Second Punic Wars, which was basically Greece is in the descendancy, the Greek Empire, kind of losing its power and Rome, the Roman Empire, is gaining in power so Sicily was invaded at that time by Rome. It was during the years 213 and 212 BC and Hiero II approached Archimedes again to solve this problem and come up with some weapons of war to help fight the Romans. Those weapons of war that Archimedes came up with probably weren't that successful. He used mirrors to come up with a way to direct the sun's light to try and burn the ships, something which I don't suppose worked all that well but it did show that he understood optics quite well. And he designed a giant claw, which the idea being could lift the boats out of the water and shake them apart. I don't think they worked that well because the Rome did win that siege and uh, Archimedes lost his life during the kind of sacking of Syracuse at that time. And it's said that he was just doing his maths still and so involved with his maths that he did not want to go and meet this conquering general. And so the soldier that captured him just got annoyed and ran him through with the sword. Florence, look at it. Well, it's really nice, Florence, isn't it? See, these are, are where? Columns. That's a window. What type of columns would they have been, Daddy? That would be Doric, Mum. Doric columns, Florence. Daddy will teach you all about the different columns when you're a little bit older. And then he'll test you on them. Dad, 